All right, everybody, let's go over what happened today with the earthquake. There's a lot of questions. I've been getting hammered with them. I'm going to try to answer as many as possible and kind of lay out exactly what happened or how rare it is or unrare it is and, you know, what this means going forward. Now, first and foremost, here's the information. There was our earthquake, a 5.1 at 8.07 a.m. and 37 seconds, uh, basically up near Sparta, which is up there in Allegheny County near the Virginia border. We've had two distinct aftershocks so far, a 1.8 and a 1.7. Those happened at around 11.45 to about noon, so right before lunchtime today. And because we had small aftershocks, the chances of this being a foreshock is pretty much near zero. Doesn't mean it's impossible, but it's very unlikely. An earthquake this size is gonna be the main shock, especially since we had about eight to nine foreshocks yesterday and this morning, the main shock and now two aftershocks. Now, as we widen this out, the thing people have been asking me about is how rare is this? Well, it's not rare to get earthquakes in North Carolina. In fact, people are shocked that we get a lot just since 2020, okay, that's 20 years, there are 1,736 earthquakes on this map. That's 1,736. In fact, just in the last 12 months, there's been 128 in our region. Now, they're all typically small, 1.0 to like 2.5, maybe a 3, which would be pretty significant, but generally in that 1 to 3 uh, magnitude range. That's pretty rare to see something this large. In fact, this will probably be the second largest earthquake to ever occur in the state of North Carolina. The Asheville one, you'll see different numbers, 5.2 to 5.5. You know, remember back when this happened in 1916, we really didn't have a way to accurately give a specific magnitude. So there's always a range in some of those older earthquakes. The biggest earthquake ever on the East Coast was in Charleston, South Carolina. That was estimated to be a 7.3 and it actually caused damage up here in the Charlotte area. Wilkesboro, I know the E is missing there, but it was a 5.1 and there's the Sparta one. It's a 5.1. What kind of damage have we seen? Well, Scotty Powell sent me this from up in the Sparta area. A lot of bricks uh, you could see up there. The chimney completely collapsed. A lot of cracks. There will be minor damage and some substantial damage in some parts of the Sparta, Sparta area, right around the area where the epicenter is. I would expect to see um, you know, possibly some, some damage to pipes and maybe even roads and stuff up in that region. Now, one of the things that is interesting is how far these are felt. These are big earthquakes that have happened east of the Rockies. We had a 5.8 in Oklahoma fell over a big chunk of the country, a 4.1 in Dover back in 2017. Everyone remembers the Virginia earthquake in August uh, 23rd of 2011. That was felt all the way down here in the Carolinas. The reason we feel earthquakes over big, vast areas of the east, unlike the west, you can see a 6.0 that was felt in California, but over a relatively small area. The eastern United States has much uh, older rocks and our rocks are more stable. There's not a bunch of faults that break up the seismic waves, so they tend to travel long distances. Unlike the West Coast, the rocks are new, they're flexible, there's a lot of faults which will dampen the effects of the earthquake over longer distances. Of course, short distances doesn't really matter, uh, but you will see that happen in the eastern part of the, of the country versus the West. Now, the risk. This is the thing. People are shocked to learn that we actually live in a pretty active area for earthquakes. You can see there's a little bullseye near Charleston where the 1886 earthquake happened, eastern Tennessee and western North Carolina where this morning's quake occurred, and then the New Madrin zone, which is right there um, on the mouth of the, or in the Mississippi River area, uh, you know, right around Memphis, uh, northeast of there, northwest of there. That's a pretty big fault. And then central Oklahoma, which has been induced because of wastewater, deep, wa um, deep um, wastewater injections into the crust, which has caused a lot of the earthquakes there. It's actually called human-induced seismicity. So that's what's happening in the middle of the country. Now, why was it felt over such a large area? Here's the thing. I'm getting a lot of people saying, hey, I didn't feel it and I'm here. It doesn't matter if you didn't feel it. Other people did, <laughs> okay? The way we feel quakes is it depends on your personal awareness. Um, are you laying on a bed? Are you on a swing in a chair? Are you sound asleep? Are you distracted? Is there loud noises? All the human things that could distract you from feeling subtle shaking. The other thing is, what is the ground like under your house? Are you on sand? Are you in a swamp? Are you in a high rise building? All these things are going to affect whether you felt it or not. So even if you didn't feel it, doesn't mean people around you didn't feel it. There's a really good chance they felt it. And again, when you look at the seismograph, there was a lot of shaking and it lasted for a long time. You may have not even felt it that long, but the shaking actually goes on for a long period of time 
well after the earthquake is over. So um, yes, this is a completely abnormal event for our area based on the size, but not the fact that we had an earthquake. Earthquakes are very common here. We intraplate um, intra plate earthquakes that we get here in the southeast are because of deep faults that are not really surface faults like you see out west. They're embedded deep into the bedrock and the crust. And remember, our mountains were made through a geological process and some of those processes are still going on today. Some of it's settling to create earthquakes. We would expect an earthquake of this size probably once a century. That's how rare this size of an earthquake is, more so than the earthquake itself.